What happened yesterday is textbook terrorism. And let me read you a definition. It's from the Federal Code of Regulations. It's defined as the unlawful use of force and violence against persons or property to intimidate or coerce a government, the civilian population, or any segment thereof in furtherance of political or social objectives. More immediately, we know that the current president must be held accountable. That's Washington, D.C. Mayor Muriel Bowser. She's calling on the Joint Terrorism Task Force to investigate, arrest, prosecute any of those who entered the U.S. Capitol destroying property or inciting acts of domestic terrorism. So far, dozens have been arrested, the FBI, asking the public for tips to identify rioters. Bowser also calling for a probe into security failures that led to that violent invasion by Trump supporters. A day late, security now being stepped up with an unscalable wall going up around the U.S. Capitol. There will be 6,200 guardsmen in total by the weekend. The new measures will be in place for at least 30 days following Wednesday's riot that left four people dead. We can't save her here. We gotta get the EMS here. The violence, a culmination of months of dangerous rhetoric from Donald Trump. We will not take it anymore. And his allies, who've repeatedly made unproven claims of election fraud. The assault on the U.S. Capitol delayed but did not prevent the formal certification of Joe Biden's presidential election victory by the U.S. Congress in the early morning hours. Trump responded, saying even though he disagrees with the outcome, there will be an orderly transition on January 20th. The statement was shared by a White House spokesman. Trump couldn't post it himself because Twitter suspended his account for repeated and severe policy violations. Facebook going a step further Thursday, blocking Trump's account indefinitely. The company's CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, says we believe the risks of allowing the president to continue to use our service during this period are simply too great. In Washington, a rebuke to Trump, a growing number of White House officials resigning just 13 days before Biden is sworn in. And former U.S. Attorney General Bill Barr says Trump's conduct is a betrayal of his office and supporters. Now there are growing calls to remove Trump from office immediately. I join the Senate Democratic leader in calling on the vice president to remove this president by immediately invoking the 25th Amendment. If the vice president and the cabinet do not act, the Congress may be prepared to move forward with impeachment. If impeached again, Trump would be the first president in U.S. history to be impeached twice. Melissa Duggan, City News.